Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at MPLS VPNs. Particularly within MPLS VPNs, we're going to be taking a look at running OSPF from the premise edge to customer edge. So in this lab, as we can see, we have five routers. We're using router 1 and router 5 as the customer edge routers. Router 2 and router 4 are going to be the premise edge routers and router 3 is going to be the P router. It's strictly going to be running MPLS. So what we can see also from the network topology is that we have OSPF area 0 running in between R1 to R2 and then also OSPF area 0 is running from R4 to R5. Again that's our premise edge to customer edge routing protocol that we're using in this lab. We're going to show you how to to run OSPF inside your MPLS VPN. We're going to show you some tuning features with OSPF to preserve the the OSPF routes show, so that they show up as intra area routes from customer edge to customer edge. We're also going to show you how to make them show up as inter area routes as well. So OIA and O routes. We're also going to do and finish up with this lab. We're going to set up this back door between R1 and R5. And what we're going to see is that the OSPF routing should use the back door instead of the MPLS VPN running from R2, R3 to R4. So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the routing inside of OSPF so that the routing prefers to travel over the MPLS VPN before going across the fast Ethernet connection directly connected from R1 to R5 to reach their loopback zero interface IP addresses. As we can see also in our lab we have EIGRP autonomous system number one running and that's strictly inside of the MPLS network. We're also going to be running MPLS from R2 to R3 and from R3 to R4. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the customer edge routers and I'm going to set up OSPF as the customer edge routing protocol. So let's get into router 1. We'll go and do router OSPF for process 1. And then we're going to specify the network statement 192.168.12.1 with all zeros. And then we're going to put that in area 1. Again, this is the link between R1 and R2. So next let's go to R5 and what we're going to do is we're going to show you how using different process IDs between your customer edge sites is going to manipulate how these OSPF routes end up in the other sites or the other sites routing table. So just by changing the process ID we're going to see how that manipulates the routes as they come in to the OSPF on the other end of the MPLS VPN. So what we're going to do on R5 is we're going to run OSPF for process. We'll do router OSPF for process 5. And we're going to do this for network 192.168.45.5. Then all host bit mask and then this is going to be in area 0. So now that that is complete, one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to, we have OSPF routing turned on R1 and R5. Again, R5 is running process 5 and R1 is running process 1. And I'm going to show you later on once we get into the mutual redistribution between MPLS, our multi-protocol BGP and OSPF, we're going to show you what this using different processes will do and how this will